How many of you are enjoying the Family Survival Guide series? Okay. Yeah, I got one hand raised on that one. Anybody over here with a hand raised? Okay, a couple in the back. All right, I see you. Well, I hope you're enjoying it because we're going to continue to go with it today. Everybody has a family, right? What do they say? You can't pick your family, right? So we just, we have to, we have to take what we've been given and deal with it, right? No, that's not it. This, this isn't a series just to hand you out some things on, this is just how you cope with life, right? That's not what this series is going to be about. We, we think, I, I believe, for, for your family and for this family of believers as well, that we can thrive, not just survive. I believe that the time is now for us as the body of Christ and for Christians to start thriving, to change our mindset and to thrive. And so just quickly, some of the things that we've uh, touched on in the last few weeks, the, the biggest thing, right, what we have to do to, to thrive is we have to make that decision. It all starts with a decision. I don't care if you're in this place and you're, you're married, you have a family, or if you're single, or you're, whatever your situation is, this isn't just for families. This is for you. You have to make the decision to know God. That, that has to be your first response. I must know God. And once you make that decision, you can set the direction, right? God, the cool thing about setting the direction is God's already set the direction for us. We just have to say yes to his word, right? We have to say, yeah, we have to be obedient to what he's asking us to do, and then we have to make the declaration, right? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We declare that over our families, right? Are you with me? Last week, we talked a little bit about thinking generationally, and that's what we're going to pick up on this morning as well. But we, we have to remember that we have to choose who we let influence us. Even as an adult, uh, you can still be influenced. This isn't just for teenagers. Even adults, you can be influenced. And we have to be careful who is speaking into our lives because if we're not careful, we can begin to sound like that influence in the ears of our children, right? So we have to be really careful. It, it's an important thing for us. Who is pouring into our lives? What are we saturating our lives with? Because that is the voice that the next generation will hear. We need to remember that we can choose our legacy. We do have the power to choose your legacy. I don't care where you're at. I don't care where you came from. I don't care how much money is in your checking account. We were, we were uh, this week driving um, down to Dolphin Island on vacation, and we drove through a place that we lived in uh, Jackson, Mississippi. Is this okay? This is, really, this is a little off track. Is that all right? We were driving through a place we lived at. Every time I drive through that place, I went to college there for a year. The one thing I remember is how ridiculously broke we were. It, it, it's almost comical. I can remember having zero money. Uh, bouncing checks. It, it was just this. We shouldn't even have been allowed. We shouldn't have been allowed to be there. We were so broke, right? But it it doesn't matter where you're at or where you've come from. I, I drive through that place. I remember those things, but I also thank God that I chose a different legacy, right? We chose we're gonna, we're going to get to work and we're going to do this thing. So you you too have the power to choose your legacy doesn't matter where you're at. So if I was to maybe title this message or just kind of a big idea or a big thought, the question would be, what do you and I need to pass down to the next generation for them to succeed? What, what does the next generation need for us? A generation, if you'll remember, is anybody younger than you, right? We talked about the boomers and the millennials and the Zers and the Alphas and, and all that generation. Right? It's, it's anybody that is young. What do they need? For most of us in here, right, For my, when I just think about my boys, I want my boys to be better than me, right? You, you would want for your children as well 
I hope that my children are better than me. In, in this world, in their careers, I'm, I'm spurring them on to go to school, go to work, work. I want them to be better than me, both in the physical and in the spiritual as well, right? We, we want this next generation to be better than us. And I think if there was, if there was maybe one, just if I just had to, to narrow it down maybe to one thing, uh, one, one word of advice for this next generation, I, I would say that Jesus is worth it. He's worth it. You know, I've been serving the Lord now for around 20 years or so. I grew up in church, and then I was out of church and got back into church. And If I had one thing to say, I would say he's worth it. In the good, in the bad, in the bouncing checks, <laughs> in the feast, in the, in the famine, in the success, in the failure. We had lots of failures. I would say that he's worth it. And in one of the, the passages that I want us to read, I don't even have this up here. You can just write this down. You can read, you can read it later. It's in Matthew 7, and it's verse 24 through 25, and it says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, this is Jesus talking to the people. He said, Whoever hears these sayings of mine, and he does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descends, the flood came, the winds blew, and it's so encouraging. And it, it beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Listen, I'll guarantee you this much in your walk. The wind will come, right? Anybody walk long enough with the Lord, you know the wind will come. The rain will come. The floods will come. And it's going to beat on your house. It's going to beat your house to death. But guess what? It's not going to break. It's not going to fall. Why? Because it was built on a rock. And every day in my life, I've been determined, I'm going to pick up that hammer, I'm going to grab a nail, and I'm going to build my house. I determined on the foundation that I was going to build my life on. It wasn't going to be on the sand. It wasn't going to be the things of this world and and I wasn't going to lose every, all, I wasn't going to invest in everything. I'm, I made a determination that he's worth it. And every single day I'm going to build my house on that rock. If I could pass any advice on to you, build your house on that rock and build it every day. And there will be, there will be storms, but it's not going to blow your house down because you built it on the rock. And I think if Joshua were here, he would say the same thing. I think he'd say, you know what? He's worth it. In the good. Could you imagine? Could you imagine walking around the walls of Jericho and just with the just with your voice, those walls come a tumbling down. Right? Could you imagine that? Could you imagine in Joshua ten, as they're fighting an army and they need more daylight? Joshua raises extends his hand to heaven. And the day extends. <laughs> right? Can you imagine that? In the good. But Joshua also experienced the bad. Right? He experienced the wandering and the complaining. Burying the people who weren't going to go into the promised land. Joshua would say, you know what? Jesus is worth it. And there's a verse in Joshua that says this. And I love it. And I think it's for us. I think it's for this message. It says, Joshua left nothing undone. He, he turned aside from nothing of all that the Lord had commanded Moses. Can I encourage you this morning, wherever you're at, in your family, or if you're by yourself, or wherever you're, you're going to have a family one day, can I encourage you in one area? Leave nothing undone in your walk with Christ. I'm going to say that over here, right? Leave, leave no giant in your life. Don't, don't leave it for your kids. Don't, don't, don't leave that unconquered land for your kids. You go out and you conquer that land. They have enough. They have, they have enough giants in their life. If I can encourage you 
as you're building your house, you go out and you conquer the things in your life that need to be conquered. And really what that is, we need to learn to grow up spiritually. We need to learn to take next steps spiritually. Are you with me? All right. Three things. Here's three things that I think the next generation needs from us. They need us, first one, they need us to declare certainty in uncertain times. Uncertain times are not unfamiliar with God, right? We know what times we're living in, and I just want to encourage us to educate and encourage those in, on the times, right? We, we know what's happening in the world today, right? We, don't, we know we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be fearful of what's going on. We need to educate the next generation of what's happening and also encourage them, right? The, the uncertainty, there are giants, but also the certainty is, hey, there's grapes, right? There's a land flowing with milk and honey, whatever is going on in our lives, Uncertain times are not unfamiliar with God. We need to declare certainty in certain times. And I want to take just a moment. You know, it's been, it's been men's month in, at Life Church, and we've done some events, done some things on Saturdays. I want to take just a moment with this point, and I really want to, I really want to encourage the men in this room in a couple of areas. The first area would be, I think we need brave men. Right? Man, man, I just think we need brave men. I, I, I don't know, I, I'm not trying to say I know what the men were like in Joshua's day and, and in, this, in this chapter. I'm not trying to assume anything. But... What I can say is that it looks like Moses might have been the only man who was brave. Out of thousands of men, one man could have possibly been the only brave man. And there, what looks like could have been a lot of men who left everything undone. We need brave men. Brave men who are honest, right? Right? Brave men who are honest with God and with themselves, with their spouse. What, is a, what does a brave man look like? Just real quick, this is what I think a brave man looks like. You, you might think of something else, but a brave man speaks love, certainty, and courage over the next generation, right? We, we, find, we find a scripture, we find a declaration and we speak that and we encourage that over our children, right, men? That, that's what we do. A brave man leads the way in, in your home and in your life. Listen, I know this might not be the, the message that's being declared today, but you set the tone in your house spiritually. You are the tone setter spiritually in your house we need to be brave men spiritually. We need to volunteer. <laughs> nobody amen that. Ain't, ain't nobody got time for volunteers. We need to volunteer. Church, <laughs> you, you, know I'm, you know I'm always going gonna, gonna to push church, but there's a why behind the what when I talk about volunteering. I'm talking about in other areas too. In your community, the, the community that for some of you have, have given you so much, give back to that community that has given you so much. We, we need men, brave men, to lead the way in that, that area. You know, I, I grew up when, where we went to church, we had Royal Rangers. I don't even know if they have Royal Rangers anymore. It's like Boy Scouts is what it was, right? And, and we would send our boys and there wasn't a man in that place that I didn't trust. I, in fact, I, right, I was like, my boys need to be around these men. I can name all the men there, right, still to this day. We need men to be leaders in this community. Not, not, only, 
not only in the natural, but in the spiritual as well. Men, teach your family to fear God. It tells us in Psalm 112, 1 through 2, it says, Praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commands. It says in verse 2, Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. You know, I'm not, I'm not scared of God. It, when I talk about fear, I'm not talking about being scared of who God is. I'm talking about teaching our kids to the fear, the reverence, and the awe of who God is. Brave men teach their kids fear God. Listen, we were out on the, the ocean this week, and... You get about 40 miles out, there's not a whole lot of people out there, right? And there was a point where it was just the six of us and God out there, right? I mean, there was a moment where I was like, oof, if something happens, um, it's us, but there's God. And it, ju- it, it was a moment where we just, where I stepped back and I, I realized how small I was and how big God was, and we got to see all these cool fish and all this water, and it was just like, I I told Kelly, I was like, can you believe God made all this? (laughs) It was unbelievable to see all these things. Brave men, we need to teach our kids, and we need to declare certainty over their lives. Point two, are you still with me? Second one is this, they need us to help them know who they are, and be confident and secure in their identity as children of God. Genesis 1.27 says, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And I'm not going to hang out on this point too long. It really defines itself. But this generation, they need to know that they're made in the image of God. For those of us who step into a relationship with Jesus, we are now sons of God. We are children of God, and we are made in his image. We were not made by mistake that there was a creator that knew us from the very beginning and created us, right? Right? We call this a purpose. We need to tell our kids, God God made you in his image. We need to protect the next generation. Come on. We need to protect the next generation. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of confusion. And I promise you, if you have a a child who's even in elementary school, we had a middle schooler, now we have a high schooler, and he's a little more open than the other kids, right? He'll tell us what's going on and what what kids are talking about and, you know, what kids are doing in the bathroom. I'm like, oh, my God, these kids are doing what? (laughs) Stay out of the bathroom. (laughs) Don't go in the bathroom. (laughs) There's a a lot of confusion. You know, one thing we, one, one thing, one easy way to encourage them is that God is not the author of confusion. If, if there's ever confusion, it's not from God. Now, there's a, there's a curiosity, right? That's different. There's a curiosity. But if it brings confusion, it's not from God. We need to remember that the only thing that comes from God is clarity. And that's where the generation is to step up and to say, in uncertain times, I'm certain of who God is. And that's where we, as the generation, can say, listen, let me just encourage you and say, there's no confusion in this. This is what God says, right? That, that's our responsibility, is to protect and to teach the next generation who they are, right? Right? Yeah, yeah, it is. Last one. This is my last point. Listen, we're almost done. We're almost done. 
The last point is this. They need parents. They need parents in the church to partner together on their behalf. They need parents in the church to partner together on their behalf. There's, there's two things there's two things that are happening, and they've been happening since the beginning. But it, it seems like this is just from my, from my point of view and what I have um, been exposed to in, in my years of serving the Lord and, and, and even serving in ministry. This is what I see happening. Two things are happening. These are the only two things that are happening. There's, there's a falling away, right? There's a falling away. People are being deceived. And they're falling away. And, and scripture will tell us that. That the love of many, it's going to grow cold. Right? Don't, don't nudge your neighbor and say, you know, you're not, your love's growing cold. Don't do that. But th that's one thing that we know for sure, for sure is happening. Right? There's a falling away. People are being deceived. The second thing that is happening is people are stepping up. People are stepping up. They're remembering that I need God. Now, I see both. I, I, see, I see those who are being deceived, and, and they're slowly, I'm not, I'm not judging them, and they're, they're not going to get that from me. You make your own choices. There's a, there's a deception that's happening, but also what I see is a stepping up. There's an uprising happening as well in the body of Christ. And I know this for a fact, that the church is getting stronger. That, that's a fact, that the church is getting stronger. And, and I'm even going to declare it over Life Church, that there won't be, there won't be a fading away. There's going to be a stepping up in our in our midst and with us. It says in, in Matthew 16, 18, and I say to you, Peter, this is Jesus saying to Peter, on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against us. I don't know, there's kind of been a rock theme today in the message he says i say to you peter and on this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it i don't know about you but i want to get my my family to a place that is getting stronger i i want to surround my my family my generation in those younger than me. I want to surround them with people who are getting stronger. That you can bring your family to this place and there'll be no confusion in the building. And guess what? You can run into this and you can be safe. Right? You, you can run into a relationship with other believers and you can be safe. We, we can create a place that is getting stronger. Parents need to partner together for the next generation. Parents, don't let the church become the enemy. You know, and this is, this is a whole different message in and of itself. But I want to encourage you in your walk and in your pursuit of Jesus, don't let your heart and don't let your experience with the church hurt the next generation. Listen, I've been around church long enough. It ain't the church that hurt me. There's some people that have said some things to me, and I'm sure there's some people who have said some things to you and they've treated you unfairly, and it has caused some hurt in your life. But also... I've been around long enough to know that I can step back and I can say, you know what, maybe that person was in a bad spot. Maybe they just, maybe there's some things going on in their life and I just, 
I didn't know the full story. It doesn't justify what they said to me and how they treated me. But you know what? I have, I have more grace for those people. Because I'll just tell you, the more I'm around people, just the more you're around people, right? Because people are people. It's just what, it's just, and I hope you have grace for me just like I have grace for you. Don't let the church become the enemy. Parents, they need to see us partnering together on their behalf couple of quick things. How do we partner together? I'm a jump in. I'm a jump in kind of guy. Jump in, get involved, get to know the people around you. The person that could change your life in this place could be sitting in front of you. They could be sitting next to you. They have what you need. One of the greatest ways you can partner together is to jump in. The other thing is let those around you know that you're here for them. I hope you know that every single week in this place and outside of this place, I'm here because I want to see you thrive. I want to see you personally thrive. Man, I want to see your marriage explode. I, I want to see you impact and have an influence on so many people, right? We need to do the same in our relationships. We need to let those people know that, hey, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I'm, I'm supporting you. I'm, I'm cheering you on. I want the best for you. We need to partner together as parents to strengthen the next generation. And I want to encourage you, I'll leave you, I'll leave you with a challenge. Don't build your life on sinking sand. Don't, don't build your life on sinking sand. Build your life on, on the rock. And you're probably in this place, and you would say, you know what, I just, I've already started building, you know? I've already started, I've come too far. I've built my life on things that don't matter. Can I just encourage you this morning? Tear that house down. Tear that house down and start over. You have the opportunity today to make the decision, not only for your today, but for your tomorrow. I build my house so that my kids and my grandkids and whoever else wants to, they can come into my house. I want to encourage you to build your house. 